Good morning, everyone. On this once again slightly icy morning, we give thanks to to God for giving us safe places to be and communities that care for us and watch out for us as well. As we gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. Well, today in our clothing of the King, we are at form or function. Isaiah 61 verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Have you ever stopped to think about the point of clothes? Why do we wear them? Why do some of us gravitate toward wardrobes of bright colors, while others of us tend to wear neutrals, and still others would be happiest to remain in pajamas all day? Do we, why do sports teams wear certain socks and shorts, and what does it mean for specific professions, both religious and civil, require specific types of dress? Some of these questions are answered by aesthetics, while others find their answers in our actions or behaviors. The form of our clothes often signifies something about our preferences, our status, or our lifestyle, while the function of our clothes signifies something that we about what we do. Either way, clothes reveal sometimes more than we realize who we are. The simple and perhaps obvious fact should enrich and enhance our understanding of Isaiah's description of the garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness. For a Christ, the Christian, such descriptions are commonplace. But don't let the repetition fade, rep, repetition fade into an unmentionable cliche. Such garments and robes are like any other. If you are a form person, picture them as a far greater than your most expensive coat or dress. If you are a more function person, consider them as giving you a not just superpowers, but equipping you to fulfill the status of president or king. And most importantly, in Christ, hear and trust that these adorn you here and now. They aren't just hanging in your closet, waiting for a special day. Our creator has tailored them perfectly to fit you. You never have to wash or repair them. And by them, all identify you as Christ's bride, God's priest, with access to all that he has. Heavenly Father, remind us that by clothing us in salvation and righteousness, you give us a new and permanent identity. You fulfill all our longings for form and function by dressing us in the glory of your son. Form or function. Clothing. Every, like even moving out here from Minnesota, um, like the difference of what expected work attire was um, or Sunday attire is. It's different church to church. It's different state to state. It's different in Guatemala than it was here in Washington or in Minnesota. And you kind of adjust your wardrobe to fit in a little bit, or you just don't and you remind who you are no matter what. Um, but definitely some some changes of that to um, become part of the culture to fit in um, to but sometimes also there's a functional part of that um, my wardrobe from winter in Minnesota was heavy wool sweaters and long underwear and layers and 
thick hats and mittens and scarves and boots and um, layers upon layers upon layers, um, make sure most of the skin was covered and that was necessary. So I have a ton of that kind of clothing, but most of those sweaters, if I put them on even for a, an hour here, I will be sweating and uncomfortable because they're too warm. It is, it is, an, I have a need for a different kind of wardrobe out here, a different function because it's not as cold, but it is wetter, wetter. So I need to adapt. I need to become um, savvy to what is needed at the time. But also there's those function pieces of what you would wear on the floor of the legislature is not the same thing you'd wear on your couch on a Saturday morning. It's not, well, maybe it is in your life, but most of the time our pajamas are not something we're going to wear meeting the president or meeting the governor or putting a petition before a city council. Where things have gotten really kind of confusing is in a high school these days. Um, you pick up kids and half of them are in pajamas. Um, and then other states of, of, of clothing that, that just... I'm curious, unless there's a game day and then the teams will have a jersey on or something to identify them as part of the team. So just kind of think about what your clothing, maybe over your lifetime, in certain in your when you were in your professional life, when you were in your private life, when you were younger, when you're older, when you're traveling, all those pieces, they change. And they also give cues to people around you. Are you in entering a formal setting? Are you um, in your more easygoing type of, of status or place or moment in the week? Um, we dress often to be comfortable or to um, give us the confidence to be poised and present in the necessary times. Um, so what does it have to do with, with our faith? Well, we have this text from Isaiah about being clothed in the garments of salvation and covered with the robe of righteousness, just like a bridegroom and a bride, adept and adorned in our jewels and headdresses. Um, kind of wonder what that, the picture of that seems very opulent, but perhaps it is something that completely just covers you in Christ. Um, those the righteousness of God on your shoulders instead of your sin and your guilt and your struggles. Not necessarily visible, but something you, you feel the lack of the weight of your sin when you get forgiven, when you hear it. Um, and when you're wrapped in that robe of righteousness, you feel the perhaps the, the presence of God, or perhaps it's just a, 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 up here that you're aware of how God has completely covered you with his own um, salvation. And the, what I, I do like about this text here today, it talks, um, this is something that people won't necessarily see. This is not what it says here, but um, our clothes, our normal clothes reveal more than we realize about who we are. But by looking at our clothes, usually we can't tell if somebody is a Christian or not, can we? Um, we might try to assume that certain ways of being, especially in the more legalistic churches, that those are the Christians and those are not because they are, are dressed in a proper way. But also, um, we can't just look at somebody and say, oh, I see Christ. They're, they're the robe of righteousness on. Oh, they have the garments of salvation on too. It is a word that we do not see, but we um, hear. And we hear, we hold on to the promise through our heart, through our ears. And that's where we are wrapped more than anything else. Um, not with a literal cloth, not with a literal garment, but with a word that does the same thing for us. Um, and in fact, it fits us perfectly because it was made just for us, tailor made for you was this garment of salvation. And it's not something that you can put in the closet and decide to adapt to a new culture or to become a new person or to put become more professional or less professional. This garment of salvation, this robe of righteousness is yours no matter what function you have in society, no matter what role you have in your family or in your neighborhood, this one endures. 
This one is always there underneath it all. Um, as close to you as anything could possibly be. In fact, at one with you, because Christ, once you are claimed, never, ever lets you go. It's not something you can put in the closet. It's not something that a little weight gain or loss will make um, uncomfortable. Even though sometimes by knowing that we are Christ, it might make you uncomfortable. But this is a garment. This is a, a covering that that envelops you always in all the times and all the seasons that you will live. Thanks be to God. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. We give thanks for the, the gift of clothing, whether it's for function or for form, that you provide the workers who make it, the material that it's made from, the way we, we are able to purchase and, and care for it. And we ask that you provide um, clothing for those who do not have it, that do not have warm clothing or ways to keep dry, that you, you provide that daily bread and a way to be sustained and to have the assurance of that into the future. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We pray, pray for those who mourn this day. We pray for those who... Um, are in need of healing, either waiting for surgery, recovering from surgery, ill. We have several of our kids out um, in our congregation with influenza, so we're praying for them too, um, and their families, that they return to health quickly. We pray for um, those who are um, in the midst of anxiety and despair, that you your light shines and wraps them in your love. And we pray for the gift of forgiveness, the way we struggle to, um, to limit ourselves, to care for our neighbors, to, um, and the need we have when we fall short or other people harm us for that forgiveness and that restoration that you alone can bring to us. For the gifts of relationship with others, we ask for your provision, for your interceding upon, inter for you to intercede into our relationships when needed, which is likely often because relationships are hard, but they're also wondrous, Lord. So we give thanks for the gift that um, our interconnectedness with one another gives to us. For the communion of faith in your church, Lord, we give thanks that when one member of our church, our bo the body of Christ, is hurting, that we all do hurt, um, that we're all aware. And we ask that you continue to make that our reality, that we rejoice together, we, um, we weep together, we lament and praise together, and that we also have time to play and to worship together. Thank you for all these different um, ways that we interact and continue to knit us together um, to help us create space for one another and to be truly your body of Christ in this place. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for the this election year. We pray for our Supreme Court and our legislative bodies. And we pray for our local governments. We also pray for our world, Lord. We pray as we have been for way too long already on Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Palestine, China, Miramar, um, other places in the world where they don't quite make the headlines but that are in need of your um, stability and your guidance. 
for people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we pray, continue to provide for those in need in our country that has been seen snow in places that don't normally get it. We ask that you give a warm place um, for supply lines that are interrupted by weather. We pray that the important things do get there on time or plans are made to, um, to fill in the need and so that lives are not lost. For the places in our world that have suffered natural disasters in the last year, we ask for that next step of, of care and rebuilding that is needed. For all who work for peace and international harmony, we, um, we ask that you help us notice when somebody's trying to be peaceful, when somebody's trying to be harmonious, instead of seeing them as somebody who's asking us to change or to um, let go of something that we feel is, is vital to ourselves. Help us to maybe hear the intention and to respond to it when, um, when we can. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, continue this important work, Lord, in us. And for the church of Jesus Christ in every land, help us to be um, your church, to give that the gifts of grace and mercy, to um, pour out your love given to us by Christ Jesus on the cross um, for all of us that have that need, which is all of us. Um, thank you for the many epiphanies that you give us that shine light on who we are and how you are working in and through us. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.